The Wealthy Life is brought to you by investment dealer Raymond James. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. Wouldn't it be great to have some unexpected cash? What would you do with it? Go on a trip, buy some new toys, pay down debt, or save for your future? With me today is Guinness from Innovative Fitness. Welcome, Guinness. Thanks for having me here, Sybil. So you're a personal trainer. How did you get into that? I, a couple of years ago, went into school hoping to become a therapist. And as I went through all the schooling, worked with various sports teams and in various clinics and decided that, that wasn't really the route that I wanted to pursue and that I more enjoyed the performance training side of things. So thought I would pursue that and upon graduation started at Innovative and have been there since about May of last year. So I guess you have to stay pretty fit yourself. Yeah, we're currently training everyone that I work with for a half Ironman in June and we've got wow. a couple customers from the gym coming along with us as well. Great. Mm -hmm. well, I always believe health and wealth go absolutely together because yeah. what good's your wealth if you don't have your health? Absolutely. So what's your big question for me today? I've recently come across uh, an inheritance of about $100,000 and now that I'm done school I've begun paying off my student loan debt and okay. I was just wondering whether it would be more beneficial for me to focus on paying off my debt or to take that inheritance and put it towards some sort of investment. What's your current debt load at right now? It's at about, it was at 32000 and now it's at 26000 Oh, okay. So you're paying that down quite a bit uh, on your own? Yep. That's great. What's the interest rate at? It's at 5.35%. Okay, so not too bad. Are there some other things that you're also wanting to accomplish? Yeah, in the long run, I would like to eventually purchase a home and save some money for retirement and eventually I may, I'm in a long-term relationship with my girlfriend and eventually may want to start a family. So do you own a home yet? No? No, I'm currently renting. Okay. Great. So you want to buy a home. Yeah. You want to save for retirement. Mm -hmm. You want to pay down debt. Mm -hmm. You've got this lump sum of money and you're trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. Is there anything else on your wish list? Any fun things? Yeah, I, I would love to do some sort of traveling if I have the opportunity to and just have ultimately I just want to live a nice comfortable life and be able to do anything that I decide I want to do. And are you a disciplined saver? I, I can be. You can be? Yeah. Are you saving right now? Um, at this point I'm not on a very structured savings plan. I've just begun my new job and I'm hoping to come and discuss with people like you and the best way to go about doing that. You'll find out further in this conversation why I'm asking you how disciplined you mm -hmm. are because it will make a difference Perfect. on my suggestions as we move forward. So don't go away. When we return, find out if Guinness should pay off his debt or invest in his future. Welcome back. We're here with Guinness trying to figure out if he's smarter to spend that $100,000 inheritance to pay down debt or save for his future. Well, Guinness, we need to crunch some numbers, but I'm going to have to ask you a few more questions. Yep, no problem. You're currently renting. What is your rent per month? I'm currently paying $1,400 a month. Okay. And do you have a house in mind that you would like to buy? Um, we don't have an exact house in mind, but we have an idea and a price range that we'd like to stick around. So what's the price range you're... Ideally, we'd like to be in about the $450,000 range. Okay. Now, have you even gone as far as get pre-approved on a mortgage, or is this very preliminary? Um, we actually did look into that in early December, and we were pre-approved, but then didn't end up pursuing. Okay, but yeah. you know you can get yeah. the mortgage, so that part's good. Were you fully aware of all the costs associated with being a homeowner? Uh, that was a bit of a surprise. It's something that I started to learn a bit more about as we went through. So, yeah, a couple yeah. shockers there. Well, it's always great to buy your own home. Mm -hmm. I like I like to own my own home for a number of reasons, and it's not just financial. Yeah, It's comfortable. It's yours. Mm -hmm. It's home, right? You can make it yours. But from a numbers perspective, on a $450,000 house, you're looking at, by the time you add up your mortgage payments, mm -hmm. your property taxes, your house insurance, and just some basic maintenance, yeah. nothing too crazy, you're probably looking at about $3,200 a okay. month. So that's a lot more mm -hmm. than the $1,400 a month you're paying now. Absolutely. 
So that's an $1,800 a month difference. So this is the way I like to look at it from a financial perspective, just so that you have the information you okay. need to make an informed decision. A $450,000 house today, mm -hmm. assuming that it grows by the rate of inflation, and let's just say inflation's 3% for argument's sake, okay. should be worth about $940,000 25 years from today. Wow. So that sounds pretty good. Yeah, that sounds good. However, if you took that $1,800 a month, continue to rent, and instead took your $1,800 a month and, mm -hmm. and invested it at 6%, rate of return, it would grow to 1.2 million. In that 25 year in span? In that 25 That's year great. span. If you manage to get an 8% average rate of return, mm -hmm. you're young, you've got time on your side, yeah. maybe doable, 1.6 million. Wow. And if you manage to knock it out of the park and get 10% per year on your money, it could grow to over $2 million. Now, I never use 10% for planning. The average long-term rate of return on the stock market okay. has been around 9 or 10% per year. Mm -hmm. But you don't get that every year, and it's a rocky ride to get mm -hmm. there. Have you had investment experience thus far? No, I haven't, and that's something that I'm starting to look into a lot more now. So from a risk perspective, with knowing what you know now, would you consider your, yourself a low risk, a medium risk, or a high risk investor? I would consider going up to medium risk, probably. I don't know that I'd like to go to high risk quite yet. And I think going, I heard you say go up to medium risk. Yeah. Most investors, when I ask that question, of course everyone wants safety, they want low risk and uh, high returns, but those two things don't yeah. come together. The more you learn about investing, the more comfortable you will be with various options that give you a okay. much better rate of return potential. But I just wanted to show you the difference between renting and investing the yeah. difference or buying. I would say to start off, pretend you own and see if you can save that 1800 a month. Does that make sense? So act as though I'm paying the 3200 yeah. and just set it off to the side? Yeah, and that's that a good sense. trial period to see if you can do it. Absolutely. Now, you also mentioned that the rate on your student loan is 5.35. Mm -hmm. If you can ensure an investment rate of return that's higher than that, you're better to invest your money than you are to pay off your student loan, yeah, as long sense. as you're disciplined to continue paying your loan. Yes. Now, most people are disciplined in paying debt, because mm -hmm. it's kind of nagging at you, isn't it? It's Yeah, I'm trying to pay it off as soon as I can. You just want to get rid of it, yeah. you want it to go away. But that's not always the smartest thing. I ran a few more numbers for you. Perfect. If we assume a 2% uh, difference on your rate of return, okay. just a 2%, so meaning if you earn 7% or 7.35 mm -hmm. on average versus 5.35, yep. that's just a 2% difference. But 2% on the value of your student loan growing over time adds up to a huge number. Really? Your student loan, how many years do you have to pay it off? I'm aiming to do it in about seven years. Okay. So if you, I would say keep paying your student loan the way you are. Yeah. Invest your money instead. You may need it for a down payment on a house. You may need it for retirement. Bottom line, that $100,000 invested now by the time you're 55 at a 7% rate of return could be worth $871,000. Really? That's great. So does that help answer your question? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. How are you feeling? Feeling good, yeah. I feel like I'm on a good course and that I can do something quite productive with that, that inheritance. Great, well thanks Guinness. I really appreciate you coming on the show thanks today. Thanks a lot for having me, Sybil, I appreciate it. And coming up next, don't worry, be happy. Give your money away. Find out what I'm talking about when we return. <laughs>